Hi guys, here I am, Mask Monday. Now I realised that I was the only dope who was persisting in trying to do her mask at night. So, don't ask me why. Just in my head, you put a mask on, you have a chillax, then you go to bed. But actually, it's a bit of a faff before bed, so I'm trying in the morning, just like everyone else. I'm fawn, you know me, do to do, press a thing, do to do, it's Mask Monday, I don't want to do that. Anyway, the mask I'm going to try today is not a sheet mask, it's a peel off mask and it's a Manuka Honey peel off mask by 7th Heaven. Glasses, <clears throat> I think it's fairly self explanatory, but you know I'm not getting on with the sheet ones very well. Uh, oh, it gently removes dead skin cells and empties the pores with Manuka Honey from the bushes no, from the nectar of the bushes of New Zealand, mixed with rejuvenating jasmine and aloe vera. Mm. It's the perfect me time treat for busy bees, used weekly. It's the bees knees. Right, well, oh, how long does it stay on for? Relax for, oh, it's a 20 minute, 25 minutes, 25 minutes. Gosh, that's a long one, isn't it? Oh, well, you know me. I can ramble with the best of them. Although, I haven't been given a question this week. I was kind of hoping one of you guys would give me a question, but you didn't. So it is going to be a real ramble. Let me just get this out. So this is different. I've never used a gel one before. Is that gel or is that mask? What do you do with it? Hang on a minute. I'm being a complete... Oh, God. I'm doing a fawn. There isn't an actual mask in there, you paint it on. Oh my God. Here we go. It's coming out. I don't know why, but I thought there'd be like a, you know, a jelly type actual mask in there. A bit like, you know, when you get the eye ones. Okay, ooh, this is gonna be messy. Oh, I'm not long at the shower. It does smell of honey. <clears throat> it's got that smell of honey. Let's just squeeze some more out. <sighs> Lots of it, isn't there, guys? <laughs> but it should be comfortable to talk in, even though I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. Let's just have a little look now in the mirror, see if I've got all the bits and pieces that I need to get. Oh, I've got big globs of it on my nose. <laughs> okay. Do that. Okay, use the remainder up on my neck. I'm going to get in the right mess getting this off. I can tell already. Anyway, yes, I didn't have a question from anybody. Um, I am trying to use the discussion board on my channel. I've put a question on there. No one's found it. I put it on there ages ago. No one's found it, so don't worry. But um, it would be a good place for questions if people have them. But I was thinking about all the various things I'd like to know if I was sitting you, you guys down and asking you questions. And I thought, what questions do people like answering? We like talking about our kids, I think. And I talk about my uh, younger daughter quite a lot because obviously she lives on the property and her, grand her grandchildren, my grandchildren are her children who live on the property. But I very rarely talk about my elder daughter. Now I have said her name in the past, but I'm not going to anymore. Um, she wasn't best pleased that I'd said her name and thinking about it, I probably shouldn't have. I had asked my younger daughter, but somehow thought my elder daughter wouldn't mind, she hasn't got children. But of course she would mind. And that was really insensitive of me. So my elder daughter, my elder daughter is the light of my life. That's not to say that my younger daughter isn't, but my elder daughter gives me a window onto who I might have been. If I'd had a different upbringing and different parents, that sounds awful, but you know what I mean. She looks a lot like me, but she's taller. She's five foot 10. She's got a fabulous, curvaceous figure and she has a waist, which I don't have. She carries her weight and her legs 
I don't carry it in my legs, I carry it around my middle. If I had a choice, I'd be like her, I'd be pear-shaped, tiny waist, because you can hide your bum, and these days, big bums are popular. Whereas little barrel people like me, <laughs> I don't think we've ever been in fashion. She is the brightest woman I think I've ever met. And a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that she's a real tough cookie, that she's really strong and she's, you know, and you know she isn't. She is one of the gentlest souls inside. Her love for her family and people she cares about is absolutely stupendous. But it doesn't often show, because if you knew her as a colleague or, you know, a casual acquaintance, you'd see this tough cookie girl who is taking the world by the throat. <laughs> I was gonna say something else then. Taking the world by the throat and wringing it out to get the good times that she wants. She is a hard, hard worker. Super, super intelligent. Um, she was the sort of equivalent of valedictorian. We don't have that, but she's super, super bright. She's got a social conscience. She's a feminist. She believes that we all should be the best that we can be. She's terribly competitive. And she looks in the mirror and she just doesn't see her own beauty. Which always amazes me because genuinely girls, when I was pregnant with her, I worried, she was my first, I worried incessantly that my baby would come out with the worst bits of me and my husband. So the potential was there for my husband's big ears, my big fat nose, you know, the potential was there for my child to come out looking like a, well, a troglodyte. And I genuinely worried about this. I mean, I don't know if everyone's like that in their first pregnancy, I think we probably are. But I genuinely was all the time thinking, oh gosh, please don't let her. Well, she's managed to come out with the best bits. She's a beautiful, beautiful look looking girl, but she doesn't see it, which I find absolutely mind boggling. She doesn't want children, and she's been sure of that since very, very young. And loads and loads of people have said to her, you'll change your mind, wait till the clock starts ticking. And she's like, honestly, I have nephews, and I love them, and I have a, uh, a niece now, and I love her. But I still don't feel the need to have a baby. She has the soul of an adventurer. If she had money behind her, she would travel the world teaching English and, and rescuing people and she has this spirit, this need to travel and, and, and embrace other cultures and it's been there since she was very, very young. I've got mad sometimes in the past because people I've known for a while, you know, family members, distant families, aunt, aunts and uncles that you don't see very often. Their first question always is, and when is she going to get married? Is she going to have children? Is she going to get married? Is she going to have children? And when I say things like, well, no, she doesn't want kids and she's not particularly, you know, wrapped up in the whole marriage thing, I get sympathy. Kind of, oh, oh well, maybe she'll change her mind. Oh, oh, you know, maybe, maybe she'll... She'll, you know, the clock will tick. She'll, she'll change her mind. And it makes me really angry because we're all different. The world is full of different people and we're all really, really important. And there are people like me, and I'll hold my hands up. If I hadn't had children, I would have felt that my life had not worked out the way I wanted it to. But equally, there are people that don't feel that way, and that is just as valid. While I was at home, being the best mum I could be, and working part-time jobs all over the place, I mean, I worked hard, I wasn't exactly um, that useful to society. Whereas the ladies out there who they know, deep down inside, for them, it's just not something they particularly want. They are out there, and they are making changes in the world that will affect my children and my grandchildren. Without ladies who are strong enough and different enough and willing 
to beat their own drum, we wouldn't have, you know, women vice presidents in this country. We had a women prime minister. Well, we've had two now. It takes a certain kind of woman who is brave enough and strong enough to go out there and fight the prejudice against women being all that they can be. You hear now of um, women soldiers, that's relatively new in the UK, but women soldiers and women can do anything. But what sometimes happens, I think, is that those of us who are traditional, and I am totally traditional, guys, those of us who are totally, totally traditional, sometimes we sort of feel sorry for the women who are different. We feel that they're somehow odd. And they're not odd. They're wonderful. They're glorious. They're making changes. And that's what she is. She is the gentlest, gentlest girl with the strongest will and desire to get out there, change the world and make it a better place for everybody, not just for children that she might have had. So she lives away from here, she lives in London and I miss her, I miss her terribly. But at the same time, I am so happy for her that she is doing what she wants to do. Anyway, let's see if I can start peeling this mask off. I'm gonna have to have a look in the mirror. Ooh, look how shiny my face is. Can you see that? Now let's see. Mm. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, love old Ireland. Is this gonna come off? It should come off in one piece, it said. I can't get my fingers under it, girls. Oh no. How the heck do I get this off? It did say peel off. Hang on, glasses on. Naturally cleansing peel off mask. Peel it off. It's not peeling off. Oh, oh hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh. Oh, it's coming. Isn't that revolting? Oh, it nearly got caught in my beard hair. Oh my lord, I swear it's pulling hair off my face. Oh guys, ow! ow. <laughs> I'm sure it's pulling badness out because it's also taking the top layer of my skin off, I think. Here we go. Oh, this isn't so bad. Down here isn't so bad, girls. <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, oh, it was much more comfortable to talk in, but that was not pleasant pulling that off. I'm gonna go and splash some water on my face, get the last bits off because I am not sitting here picking little bits. And I'll tell you ow, what my skin feels like. Okay, well, <sighs> do I look a bit pink? It does feel lovely, I have to say, it does feel lovely, but kind of, taut you know it doesn't feel moisturized so I've got my Kate Somerville um, goat milk moisturizer which I love absolutely love um, and I'm gonna slap a good amount of this on because my skin feels very dry I'm sure that it's very very clean um, and of course honey has anti back properties in it doesn't it and, and all of that sort of thing so I'm gonna slather a load of this on There we go, because I just feel a little bit, um, <laughs> I feel like my skin's been a bit sort of attacked. So maybe that isn't the right one for me, but that wasn't bad while it was on. But I think maybe I needed something a bit more moisturizing than that. So my mistake, here we go again. I can't get these flipping masks right, can I? I purposely didn't do a clay one because I thought it'll crack and it'll be drying and you don't really need drying and here I am I've used a gel one but I had it in my head that it was going to be like a plasticky thing 
<laughs> me and masks. I don't know if I'm going to keep Mask Monday going, guys, because um, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. I've kind of rambled about bits and pieces. I don't know how the hell I'm going to edit this together into something that anybody would want to watch. So this may be my shortest ever Mask Monday and possibly my last Mask Monday. I think I might do something different. But um, anyway, it's the start of the week. I have a very clean face. <laughs> I hope you're okay, guys. Bye.